The Masks We Wear, Chapter 2 A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction Written and Narrated by Eleanor Rose If you'd like to read the scripts early, you can become a patron at patreon.com backslash Mira Writes or click the link in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the latest parts of your favorite fan fictions. I rub my temples, still tense from dealing with father. There was a photo shoot I'd forgotten about, and therefore less than punctual for despite Gorilla's best efforts, and he'd called me via video to chew me out. It's a good thing I'm a model and not an actor because it's clear his words got to me. Gorilla offered to pick up an ice cream cone despite it being banned from my diet, and he only does that when I really look bad. I instead opt to stare out the window like I'm in some angsty teenage music video, and my heart throbs a moment later in surprise and want. Ladybug. She's talking to the park worker who was akumatized yesterday. Actually, I pipe up, hoping Gorilla's pity extends further than usual. Can we make a quick stop? I'd love to get Ladybug's autograph. He makes eye contact with me through the rearview mirror and gives a slight nod, slowing down and pulling off to the side of the road. I hop out, not bothering to look both ways, and trot over. She's standing at an angle where, if turned a few more degrees, she'd be able to see me, but I'll come as a surprise if she doesn't. Ladybug! I call out as she waves goodbye to the worker. She turns her pageant smile plastered on her face until she makes eye contact with me. The corners of her mouth lose their hold, sliding down and taking her lower lip with them until she's staring at me, open-mouthed. Adrian! she exclaimed, and something in my stomach flutters at the sound of her calling my name. What are you doing here? I'm on my way back from a photo shoot. Where's Cat Noir? I almost feel bad for the trick question, but what she's doing is obvious, and I want to keep the conversation going. Just a solo mission today, she says, tucking loose hair behind her ears as she glances at the ground. I realize she's never done that in front of Cat Noir, but now the score is two for two with Adrian Agrest, hitting me like a train. I shouldn't take it the wrong way, because it probably means she's comfortable with Cat, but something inside me rumbles, wishing she could be this casual about cute mannerisms in front of me. Almost done? Care to join me? Huh? She looks as surprised by the question as I feel about it. Did I mean to ask her that? No. Would I be delighted for her to come over and hang out? Yes, but I don't see her playing video games with me in my bedroom anytime soon. I'm thinking about making a present for my friend, and I could use an extra set of hands. A friend? Her eyebrows shoot skyward, bringing my attention to her eyes as she looks up. Is it? She hesitates lowering her voice and leaning in like she has a secret. For a girl? Truthfully speaking, there was no present because I hadn't planned on anything for any friend, but if I'm to fly by my britches, I may as well fasten a belt to keep them on. Nino! I say with confidence. I know they know each other, and as far as responding without thinking goes, that wasn't a half-bad answer. Is it his birthday or something? She looks a bit too concerned about this. Actually, I'm making stuff for a few of my friends. It's not a fib, because now I'm committing. I'm actually making something for Alia, Marinette, and Chloe as well. Her eyes widen when I talk, only to narrow when I mention Chloe. I know the two of them have problems. But her grumpy pout is but her grumpy pout is charming enough to distract me from pursuing it further. 
that's nice of you. What's it for? I draw a blank. Impromptu answers can only take me so far before they let me down like my father's attention. Come with me and you'll find out. I flash a look at my dimples, aren't I charming, smile that never works on her, accompanied by my best, fangirls are swooning, wink. She closes her eyes and step back with a palm over her chest, and I have to believe she's trying to disguise the eye roll behind her lashes. Okay, she says, looking at me in a way that all but... looking at me in a way that makes me all but melt. The smile she's wearing isn't one I see often. Soft and small, but not one she uses for civilians or cat noir. I've only seen it when she's staring wistfully at couples or reuniting lost pets with family. Where should I meet you? I didn't expect to make it this far. How about the craft store on the corner three blocks south? She nods, pulling out her yo-yo. I'll see you there. See you then, I say, waving goodbye. Great. I have three and a half or so minutes to come up with what on earth I'm making my friends, and even less if we don't hit the lights. I slide into the back seat, mention the craft store, and, with luck, Gorilla nods and shifts the car into drive without pressing for more info. Light reflects off a storefront, catching my eye and attention. Halloween. There are pumpkins in the store's display, and an idea hits me like a saber. Halloween-themed gifts! Or, even better, I could invite her to a Halloween party! The flames of excitement sizzle before they have the chance to roar. There's no way Father would allow a Halloween party. Even having Nino over once in a while is pushing my luck. This, of course, arises a new fear altogether. After shopping, do I bring Ladybug home with me? I would hate for Father to excuse her once we arrive. My eyes flick to the side street. We're stuck at the light, and pedestrians still have another thirty seconds to cross. It's a long shot that he'll even answer, but I pull out my phone to call Father. To my surprise, he picks up, a sour face I'm all but used to lighting up my screen. What? he asks, and I'm far more nervous to ask him about Ladybug than I would asking her on a less-than-platonic date. Hello, father, I say, wishing I'd cleared my throat before speaking. I had a quick question. Out with it. I'm busy. The video isn't clear enough to see the crease between his eyebrows deepen, but I'm sure it did. Well, uh, I wanted to know if I could have someone over today. He lifts a hand to hang up on me. No. You had Nino over yesterday, and I don't want you to fall behind on your studies. But I'd hate to cancel plans with Ladybug, I blurt out, a bit too desperately. I usually wouldn't resort to such a tactic, but please, it's Ladybug. Ladybug? His fingers curl into a fist, as though he's hesitating. Him? My father? Reconsider something? What's more unbelievable is the upturned corners of his lips. It's not quite a smile, but certainly the closest thing he's had to one in years. As horrid as the thought makes me feel, seeing him smile is a bit unnerving. There's an irony here for sure, because I've spent so much energy towards trying to make him smile. And when he finally comes close, it makes me want to press my shoulders into the back of my seat to make myself as small as possible. Yeah, Ladybug. The one who fights Akumas. That Ladybug. Uh, yeah, that's the one. His lips curl, and there's no denying it's a smile, despite the chills it sends through me. We've pulled up to the craft store, and I can see Ladybug through the panes. Well, that's different. 
how could I deny the city's beloved vigilante? Thank you, father. I want to correct him, addressing her as a beloved hero, but my luck is already stretched thin, and I don't want to get hurt by snapping it. He hangs up without a goodbye, and I step out, enjoying seeing Ladybug giggle at something the store clerk said before we make eye contact through the window. I lean back as we do, heartbeat thumping in my ears as I restrain myself from looking too eager to be here. She gives me a wave, and I step inside to return her greeting. Uh, hey, Adrian, she says. It doesn't sound natural like it would coming from a friend, but I love it nonetheless. Ready to get spooky? I ask, adjusting my black leather jacket. I'm nothing if not dressed for seasonal aesthetics, after all. She laughs politely, but I can see she's a bit uncomfortable. So, uh, do I get to know the surprise now? She bites her lip, and I am so unused to seeing a shyer version of her that my heart nearly beats itself sore. Is this how she talked to all civilians in private? Halloween, I say painting on a smug smile that doesn't match my anxiety in the slightest. Uh, Halloween? Yes, Halloween. I grab a basket and make a follow-me gesture with my neck. Nino keeps making fun of it, so I'm determined to turn his mind around. Bye. Her voice trails off, as though she wanted me to finish her question for her. Two words. I lean in closer. Halloween party. Her eyes widen before her eyebrows furrow together, clouding whatever emotion was stirring behind them. In the aggressed household? The innocent question flung like a slap. She'd been there on several occasions now and must have picked up on the culture that mirrored the black and white walls. Still working on that part, I say, feeling sheepish. But my father said it was cool for you to hang out today, if you want. I tried to play it cool as we talked, hands in my pockets and eyes forward. But it also means I can't see her reaction without making it obvious I'm checking. Ugh, if I was talking to Marinette or Alia, I wouldn't worry like this. So here, I say, grabbing a bag of suckers. Let's start with this. She takes the basket out of my hands, and I feel my arm grow hot from where her fingers brushed. Little ghosts, she says, cocking her head and locking eyes. I nod, not sure if I'm more off guard from the eye contact, or because she knows what I'm planning on making. Uh... Yeah. I need to learn how to not sound unsure in front of her. So, we'll need tissues. What else? Uh, I begin, pulling out my phone like I'm getting out a list. I hit the Pinterest icon and quickly search for Halloween party boards. Plastic spiders for ice cubes? It comes out more like a question but at least it's something to look for while I bluff this plan into reality. Okay, so that should be over... Her voice trails off as she cranes her neck, straining to see above some shelves. Here! Ladybug grabs my wrist and all but drags me into the next room and takes three sharp turns into a new aisle. She makes a motion to point at an assortment of plastic figurines, but realizes her hand is contoured around my wrist. I'm not complaining, of course, but I'm getting a bit hot under the collar. Oh, so here I are, I say, nodding as she releases her hand from around my wrist and retreats it to her chest. Spiders! I the get them in two baskets! Wait. No, that's wrong. That's not how syntax works, Adrian! 
I want to smack myself upside the head for looking silly in front of her, but that'd make it worse. She looks away, as though she's inspecting the opposite wall's grout for some reason. Ugh. I made her uncomfortable because I couldn't keep my sentences straight. Sorry, she says, crouching down to inspect the spiders. I kind of went on autopilot there, I guess. Well, I'm not complaining. I squat down next to her, not intending it to sound so forward. She doesn't respond, and my ears turn red in embarrassment. Just one bag? How much ice do you think we'll need? My heart glows at the we comment, but I don't mention it for fear of coming across more awkward than my actions already proved. Yeah, small party. What else? I swallow hard, partially because of how close we're standing and partially for the new freckle her nose is showing off. Huh. She must have gotten some sun in this last weekend, despite the chilled autumn air finding its home in Paris. Uh, decorations? Don't you have enough of those? She asks, her words accompanied by a giggle that makes me almost lose whatever is left of my dignity as I blush in response. She probably thinks it's from her light teasing, but in reality, she's so cute and so Perfect. I simply don't know what to do with myself. The jokes we exchanged going forward made it feel like we're old friends. If old friends kept flicking their line of sight away from the other and messing up punchlines by stumbling over words. <laughs> it was adorable when she did it, but I was clunky and nowhere near cute. I was still hot from her holding my wrist, and it, unfortunately, set the tone for the rest of our date. Shopping. Shopping. Not a date. We were getting supplies. Nothing more. No strings attached. Thankfully, she didn't notice my blubbering awkwardness, or if she did, she didn't find it offsetting enough to find a reason to leave. Before I knew it, we were at my father's house. I didn't realize it was possible to feel more anxiety about spending time with her until I looked at the doors in front of me thinking about all the ways father could kick her out. Everything okay? Ladybug asked, catching me off guard. Yeah, he already gave the go-ahead, so it'll be fine. I take a sharp breath as I push open the door, hoping I can trust those words. It wouldn't be the first time father changed his mind, especially about something like this. Adrian. I look up the staircase to see my father wearing a stone-faced expression. Oh. He's here. I swallow and choose my next words carefully. Father, I begin. This is Ladybug. You've met before, but... I'm aware of who she is, Adrian, he says cutting me off while waving his hand in the air, as though my words could be wafted away like bad odors. Welcome to my home. Thank you for having me. I know it's not often you allow guests, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to get to know your son better. He's remarkable, if you ask me, and... Oh no, he says, cutting her off as well. Something about his smirk makes me tense up, but I try to shake it off. You are welcome here any time, Ladybug. I put her hand on her hip without thinking about it, as though I'm Cat Noir and we're about to zip away from an Akuma. My mind understands how strange the reaction is, but I press into the small of her back to lead her away from this conversation. Yes, Father might think we're dating after seeing such a gesture, but all of my blood was pulsing a message to get out of there drumming my anxiety into action. Her quiet protests fall on my ears like needles, but I don't care. All my instincts told me to excuse her from the room and, to be honest, I'm a bit more spooked than she is. Hey, what's wrong? She asks, taking my jawline in her hands like we're a couple who does nothing but trust each other. My heart lurches at the gesture 
confused and beating itself into a panic. I... I don't know, I say, clutching my chest, but it's becoming clearer to me. I don't want her here. Well, I do want her here, but I don't want her to see how empty this house is and how father talks to me. So while it bugs me that she's so casual to me in a way that Cat Noir practically begged for, and it's frustrating that I want her to move her hands from my face to around my neck in an embrace so I can break down, I'm left with one rational choice. I put my hands on hers, lingering a second longer than intended to, then return them to her. Adrian, she begins, reaching out to touch me before hesitating as though she'd forgotten I'd removed them seconds before. I'd like you to leave, please, I hear myself say, stomach churning with an empty emotion. I don't mean it. I want her to stay. I want to sit on the couch and talk about absolutely nothing until there's nothing to talk about. I want to order drinks and see whose order is a longer ticket for the same 16 ounces of space. And I want to throw plastic spiders at her whilst sloshing water into ice cube trays as the chef stares at us from the corner, hypersensitive and worried we might break something in the priceless aggressed kitchen. I look back at her, backlit from the sunset streaking through my bedroom windows, and my heart all but stops. There flapping gracefully behind the glass, was an akuma. My lady, I whisper under my breath. I catch my mistake a moment too late and clear my throat, as though it could cover up my Freudian slip. What was that? she asks, hopefully because she hadn't heard me clearly. Ladybug, I say, louder this time, and point to the window. She turns and freezes, recognizing it instantly. She pulls out her yo-yo, feet leading her closer. I don't know if it's possible to de one before initial infection, but we're about to find out. Either she'll follow it to the victim or try to cleanse it here. I slip into the bathroom, unsure if I should transform just yet. Lucky charm! I hear her yell and a flash of light reflects off the bathroom mirror. All good? I ask, trying to mask the hesitation in my voice. Yep, safe and sound. I come out, shoving Plag back in my pocket as he protests. That's good. I'm not so sure. If there's one flying about, then there's someone feeling troubled. I should go look for them. Oh, but... I begin. But what? A minute ago I was asking her to leave, and now that she actually has something to do, something important to do, I want her to stay? She's right. I can be selfish at times. Well, Cat Noir can be selfish at times. She hasn't seen Adrian do the same. Yet. But... Her voice takes me off guard. But if Cat Noir doesn't show up, make sure you stay safe. Ladybug smiles as she props herself in the window frame. Of course, she says, looking like a teenage daydream. And Ladybug? Yes? I don't want to spook her or let her know I have feelings for her. She's already rejected Cat Noir. Her rejecting me as Adrian would break more than my heart. You're welcome any time. Of all the things to come up with, I could have done worse. A ladybug gives me a soft smile that makes me want to cry as emotions battle in my chest. I'll see you around, bottle boy, she says, her voice barely above a murmur and falls out the window. And I, like the grace she uses, fall back on the sofa, overwhelmed with love and anxiety for and about her. Oh, my ladybug, if only you knew how dear to my heart you are. 
Truthfully, I don't know what she thinks of me. We aren't friends, although we've run into each other over the years enough to be on a first-name basis. A seed of betrayal wrenches my gut. Today wouldn't have happened if she knew I was Cat Noir. It was a sin by omission, no matter how I might try to rationalize it. I mean, I don't want it to be, but that doesn't change the truth. I cross my elbow over my eyes and turn into the couch, stomach churning. This isn't the first time I've gotten physically sick with anxiety, and I'm sure it won't be the last. I've got a list longer than akumatized victims we've saved over the years to do, but something in me can't push myself to start. I have no interest. Instead, I just lay there, stomach pains and all as the bruised sky darkens into night leaving me with Plagg curled up on my cheek after gouging himself on dinner. You were all right, I tell myself, listening to my heartbeat race like I'm on trial. You'll be all right. You always are. Ten more months until I leave here and move into a flat with Nino, regardless of consequence. I have to make it until then. I have to, and I will. Even if I break myself waiting. Ten more months. Ten more months. Ten more months. I repeat it to myself like a spell or a charm, as though I can will it into existence. I eventually succumb to my responsibilities and drag myself over to my desk, hoping I can salvage at least one item off the to-do list tonight. You'll be okay, I tell myself again. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 3 is on its way. In the meantime, you can check out these other fanfictions. I'll catch you next time!